Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. So I know it's been a while since I vlogged anything on our channel. I think it's been almost a month since I released anything here. And I hope you guys miss me as much as I did. But before we start with this Wife Life Diaries, I wanted to drop by and say Happy New Year! I know 2022 isn't how we pictured and hope it would be. The past few days, I think it's only... I'm filming this January 6, and I know it's only been six days into the year and it's just bad news news after bad news after bad news but i hope that amidst all of that chaos and amidst all of the bad news i hope that you're still looking at your blessings and counting each and every single one of them because if you don't i will survive <laughs> but the reason why i'm doing a little sit down video instead of the usual wife life that we do it's because most of the clips that i shot from the time that the typhoon happened up to this vlog they're all just snippets of how my life's been, how my days have been. It's just a little life update. I never really did like a vlog vlog. I never intended to, especially after what happened in Cebu. And it's the city I consider home now. So let's start from the very beginning during the typhoon. So I know I'm a little bit late already. It's been three weeks since it happened, but honestly, it's one of the scariest experiences of my life. So our condo where we were staying at, it wasn't really affected like how my in-laws' house was, how Ben's Lola's house was affected, how Shargao was affected, how Leyte was affected, how Bohol was affected, how parts of Palawan was affected. But I think it was so scary for Ben and I because we really felt like when the building was shaking, anything could really happen. So I could still remember really vividly how the building was shaking. At first, we had electricity back then. Like the internet was still on, aircon was still on. So at first, I didn't really know if it was gonna be serious. It's so funny, like just a backstory. At 4 or 5 p.m., my mom called me and she said, Hoy, you have to prepare now. Like you have to order this, you have to order water. The typhoon will hit you tonight and also, so me, because every time a typhoon would hit us here in Manila and my mom would panic that way, it wouldn't really hit us the way that my mom would react to. So for me, I didn't really expect it. Or I think no one really expected that Odette would be that bad. And I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times already, especially if you've been watching vlogs about Odette. But it was really traumatizing. So the building was shaking and then by around 7 p.m., 7.30, that's when Ben and the IBB and I decided to go down because Ben tried using the elevator going up when he checked our car because we heard from our friends that the cars in the tower one and two for condo were getting hit by like debris by the wall that collapsed in their tower so Ben went down to check on our cars and going up he said that it took him actually I was really nervous already because he went down at around 6 45 p.m or something and then at about 7 30 7 45 maybe like an hour has passed and he hasn't come up signal was already down actually to begin with because it in the basement of our condo there's no signal at all so i was really getting scared i would try to call him his phone was off i was just so scared talaga and i could still remember vividly how i felt the time and then i just waited and waited and then that's actually when i started praying because that's when our chandelier the star wars chandelier was really swaying and i'm gonna insert a video clip right here and you could really like when you just stand still in our condo you could really feel that the video was going like that so when i couldn't reach ben that's when i started to get scared scared and when he got up finally maybe 10 or 20 minutes before 8 that's when he told me that we have to go down because the typhoon was really getting bad and people were evacuating their condos as well so we went down like 20 plus flights of stairs with our dogs and it was so funny i really wanted to survival mode i just really packed my passport i packed food i packed all our bank documents i packed all my dogs essentials i packed the money that we had in our safe everything all the valuable things i could find i even packed this bag of jewelries or all the important stuff that i have in my closet that i could put in a little thing and for me when ben started panicking that we have to go down we have to go down when he went up i didn't even get to grab that so there i left all my valuables like my bags my shoes everything and just really came down with that one bag and i could really remember like i was really shaking my whole body was shaking when we were going down the stairs it was just like adrenaline rush and when we got down to the car and then stayed in the basement that's when ben and i just waited from about eight something to almost 12 midnight and from our car i think i shot a video of us and it was really really swaying but on 
honestly I was just so overwhelmed I couldn't even talk because I felt like everything in that car was really what's important to me that's what I really felt like it was so funny because usually Ben's the more calm one he's usually the more composed one but he was really panicking like besides siya mapakalin short so there that was our Odette experience and then at around midnight when finally got signal and I got a text from my mom because I couldn't really open the apps that could help us determine where the storm is and then that's when my mom told us that the eye of the storm has passed Cebu and I think it was already past car car I think if I remember that's when Ben and I decided to go back up and then when we checked our condo it was flooded everywhere I don't have videos of that anymore because I didn't even get to bring my phone going up and then there it was weird because Ben was up until 4 or 5 in the morning he was so scared and he was so traumatized that he couldn't sleep while me on the other hand it was so weird because usually when something stressful happens with me I usually can't sleep but that time I just really went into survival mode and I just slept through it so from the time we went up I changed my clothes and there I just slept and woke up the next morning at around 9 a.m. and I looked out her window and it was so devastating and heartbreaking to see Cebu that way. Cebu for me is really one of the most special places in my heart. It was one of my favorite places in the world. It's what I consider home now and even if three weeks has passed what I saw in just from our balcony was really devastating for me. Makes me cry now because Cebu has given me so much and seeing Cebu that way was really heartbreaking. And then when Ben and I decided to check on his parents because we couldn't hear from anyone and we decided to check on his Lola then we saw the situation of Cebu. It was really heartbreaking like I never really spoke about it because I really went into survival mode. I couldn't post anything. I just took videos of what I could take because for me, it was just really hard to see Cebu that way. I'm crying now because you could see like people were really lost. People were because in our area, in the Lahug area, beside our building where our condo is, it's mostly like areas where all the houses are together and you could see like lampos were down and a lot of people really didn't have a home. People were walking with stuff and then babies and it was just really heartbreaking. Oh my god, it's the first time I'm crying on the vlog. I can't believe I still even feel this way three weeks after. It's because it's really devastating. It was just really hard to see Cebu or like people who were affected by the typhoon that way, especially days before Christmas. So after a few days into the typhoon, I think I just really went into full survival mode, like to the point that I couldn't get myself to vlog or I couldn't get myself to post anything on social media. And that's when I really realized that I'm not gonna be one of those people where in the middle of like a very stressful situation that I can get myself to vlog or just shoot anything. That's when I just really realized it. A few days after, we just really made sure our family has everything that they need. We took care of our people we took care of the members of my team making sure that they have water making sure that they have money to rebuild their homes but so that's just what Ben and I did we didn't do anything else but line up for gas line up for ATM machines just so we have everything that we need and our family and all the people that we care about after that maybe five or six days after that's when Ben and I decided to take our scheduled flight to Manila it was really hard for Ben and I like we couldn't really go into full Christmas family mode knowing that our family in Cebu were not fully okay and the people who work under us are of course having a hard time with what happened with Odette but we tried to do what we could what we did was the generators that they needed even bottles of water we bought them all here in Manila then sent it to Cebu through cargo after that a few days in Manila we got to go to Anilao on a happier note and there that's when we got to spend Christmas with my family and I'm just really thankful because after all all the things that we went through in Odette and knowing that anything can happen when you least expect it made me appreciate my family a hundred a million times more. I think the most important thing that I realized was at the end of the day, if your family's okay, if your family's alive, if your family is healthy, if your family's complete, then all the things that you can't really bring with you in times of an emergency doesn't matter. That's what I really felt like my biggest takeaway from the typhoon. And with that in mind, I really had a very happy and grateful 
holiday. That's what I think I could say. Very grateful Christmas. I was just really in the moment like what I said and we played games and yeah. So I think I'll be inserting a few clips from our Christmas and I hope you enjoy. it at home but it's about like 11 in the morning and we're starting our day early i think the store is just open to make sure that we're first in line and the places are not yet crowded so on my list over here all the shopping lists that ben and i have to do Left early with a shower <laughs> maybe just rinse la. it's so funny guys baliman good okay every time i'm in manila i always don't shower when i go out no makeup Nothing, but whenever I'm in Cebu, fully made up, fully dressed, maka heels pa sometimes. So, baliba. <laughs> Got the first good. Mabu. about three hours here in BGC we are finally on our way home but just a little backstory and why we ended up back in Manila is because the place didn't come with food it was just really breakfast so when we tried to go out yesterday in Twin Lakes there were like too much people like there were like a lot of people in Tagaytay and we were so scared that the cases are rising once again like it's about a thousand a day now that's what my mom said so we all got scared that if we kept eating out in Tagaytay it's not gonna be safe for our family because you know we have kids and we also have seniors so we just really wanted to be careful so what we did was we went home yesterday we ended up like heading home at around midnight na yata. then we all just slept right after and then yeah so we're all just gonna be spending the new year's in my house so it was all very very last minute i was like planning what food to eat what to do so ben and i will just head home now probably plan with my mom and my tita on what activities will be and yeah so to keep the kids entertained so that's just a little update adventures of ben and Vern. <laughs> the worst navigator <laughs> get lost everywhere <laughs> No guys, so it's been like two years since I was in Manila, so I'm getting confused with all the roads. So this guy is always so pissed at me. You're always on your phone kasi eh. <laughs> and then you're like, oh baby, ano pala shit, right? Oh wala, we passed it now. <laughs> Babe, I'm sure a lot of husbands can relate with you. No, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, let's see, babe, if it's right. That's Ben's worried face. Kapoy plus worried face. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, we it. made it! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Manila. We made, free. We, we made it, babe. <laughs> I missed 
at you. Hi, Cover. Baby, are you smiling? Happy. <coughs> and I don't know where this vlog is going but I'm just trying to update this as much as I can I swear guys, I don't want to vlog it's so hard for me to talk on camera again so today's a Sunday both my dad and his brother Joe Alvin who we spent Christmas with is free so meaning we can do an activity especially because Ben and I don't get to join their family stuff because <laughs> we're all the way in Cebu so what we're doing is archery we also took out the guns and we're doing a little firing Sunday. So Ben and I wanted to do archery for a change. So we're all complete. Super clingy lang. We were together for... Girl, how long were we together? Like since... December 21. And we're, and we're still together. What is clingy? <laughs> we're all in this together. I was telling them, so I'm not awkward to vlog. Oh, oh my, no, but I really like you short break. Natin. Yeah, that's true. No? We really got to enjoy the holidays. We got to enjoy family time, especially like I feel like every time I would see you guys, it's always packed with activities. Mm. Like, we vlog, pa, yeah. tayo nagko content. So I feel like that time was really like what Brittany said, a good break. But we're back. We're we trying. We're back with a bang, literally. <laughs> Oh wow! Good morning guys! So I think today is Jan 4 and our agenda for today is we're going to have our booster shots. So me, my mom, and Ben will be doing just that and then all our helpers and driver will be going tomorrow. So hopefully it all works out because there's a surge in Manila again so we're all very scared with the rising cases. So we really, really have to get our boosters. What I know is where we're going, it's in Nayong Pilipino. And I'm not sure if you can choose the vaccine, but I know all you have to do is bring an ID, your vaccination card, and that's it. They're just gonna give you your booster shot. Actually, yesterday, I started my water diet again because, guys, I'm gonna be transparent with you. I'm gonna show you how I look like now <laughs> with all my holiday eating. Oh my god, it's been a while since I Tommy ako na ganyan. But I think I have to be kinder to myself because I'm also due for my period tomorrow or the day after that. So maybe it's just me bloating or ako talaga yung may kasalanan. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's the update for today and I'm gonna take you with me. Hopefully, I don't forget to vlog because I really don't know how to vlog anymore. <laughs> Including this, I think. Whoa, around. that's the line. It's the... At least we're just in the car. Wow, that's good though. People are getting vaccine. Wait lang po yung for no? Thank you. Kaya up na lang po. Tapos pabigay na lang din po. Number okay. 7 na lang po. Thank you. Okay, so they give you this form after. So it's just information. 
this one and a question there. So we got here at around 2 o'clock I think or even before 2 and it's already 4.46 p.m. and we're still waiting for our turn but no worries it's at least we're getting our booster shots done before. But then I head back to Cebu. Eat it! Time check it's 5.16 and we're next in line. Finally all worth it. Vaccine for booster, 0.25 ml lang po tayo, lower dose. And then one shot lang po. Okay. Okay. Yung relaxan po, ha? One, tingin nga malalit. Vaccine given po. Good morning, guys. So, uh, side effect update. We got my back hurt. My arm is so heavy. I think I have chills. So far, that's it naman. It's so hard to get up. Like, all I wanna do is sleep. Oh. Okay, so 12.30 and my symptoms are getting worse. Ben just has body ache, body pains. But me, yeah, I think my arm is really feels bruised. And then my back is aching. I have a really terrible migraine. Hopefully, when I eaten and taken by Jessic, it will all go away. I feel like, you know, when you feel feverish, that's how it feels like. But I checked my temperature. I was still around 36.8, I think, or 0.9. So that's a good sign. At least I don't have fever. I'm sure Ben doesn't have fever because he looks a lot better than I do. <laughs> so 6 p.m. and the whole day, Ben and I were just literally in bed. My mom said, who got COVID early last year, she said that this is exactly how COVID feels like, but times like 50 because of course it's heightened. So Moderna's really rough. Same symptoms the whole day, just body ache. Your injection site feels really bruised and heavy. It's hard to lift it, hard to sleep on that side of the bed as well so there's really nothing to worry about it honestly just feels like the flu so yeah that's my update and i'm not sure if i can still update you guys later but we'll see hopefully tomorrow all the side effects are gone so i can finally start working for 2022 <laughs>